Good evening, everyone. Well, Sunday in the world of golf is the big event, the day where you can make your claim to fame. And today's UPGA Championship, one of four golfers became very famous and did it like a pro. Good crowd came out to watch the final round. It was the same group in yesterday's round that played well. Let's start off with the 2007 champ. Tim Drees sinks this birdie on 15th for a 73. Then Dave Ellis puts a nice round together with this birdie putt on five. Then brother Dan seemed like he was in the bunker all day, but chipped up nicely on seven to finish with a par. Then it was the Jim Markle show, everyone. Where do we start? Let's start on 11, where he chips in from the bunker, the birdie that hole. What a nice shot from Jim. Just a nice job with his arms today, but the putter was even better. Let's go to 13, where he makes this nice 20 foot birdie putt as he lowers his score from there. And then to tap it off, it gets it doesn't get better than this. 40 foot footer out of long range and watch this go. Go Kerplunk in the hole on 16. The par three for birdie. The crowd really got into it. What a show with the putter. Here he taps in for par on 18. Jim Markle is your 2012 UPGA champion. What a great display of golf and because of that, he gets showered with some champagne. Hey folks, we got golfers coming. You know, I've been thinking about this since I was probably high school. And uh, just it's tough to come down here and, and play against all these guys. And you know, I haven't been able to play in the UPs many years. And I knew that when I came to my home course that I would, uh, you know, have to come out and, you know, play the game that I need to play to win. It's fun. It was a fun day, and uh, it was a, a lucky, lucky four days. I mean, I hit some shots that were laughable. So it, uh, you know, but that's what it takes, and I'm glad it happened. I'm glad it's over. Well, now he's laughing now. It was just a great weekend of golf, and congratulations to all that participated. It was fun to watch you all play for the past four days. Several Upper Peninsula drivers had better days in their final races at the UP Off-Road 100 at Bark River International Raceway. One of those drivers was Chad Horta Felch in the Pro Two-Wheel Drive class. Horde will be the fifth truck going over the jump in this sequence. The red number nine had a broken rim during Sun Saturday's race, which pushed him back in Sunday's starting grid. But he moved two spots to third when two trucks collided. Proved a very nice passing lane early in the race. But speed and luck were not on his side and Hort finished in fifth place. CJ e. Greaves and Rob Macron were first and second in that division. So much dirt trying to wake my way, work my way up through. We sat in the third spot at the mandatory yellow caution. I really thought I had something to get up and go after these guys. I just really lacked side bite and some forward traction. All in all, it was a good race weekend. Um, you know, we'll just regroup here and get ready for Crandon. And the Cranon race is about two weeks away. Hoard was in second place in the season standings going into today's action, but he may have dropped a step or two thanks to better finishes from CJ Graves and Bryce Menzies. And let's water down the track. Let's go to the Pro Light Division. Iron Rivers, Nick Baumgartner in black number 12, was trying to keep it in together in his class. Easier said than done as piece of metal flies away. Baumgartner was a disappointing 13th Saturday. This means he started near the back of the race, but he puts the pedal to the metal as often as he could, and it paid off. He passes several drivers during the race and ended up in seventh place. Bumgarner was seventh in the season standings going into the race. Andrew Cadell won in this division after he was 11th on Saturday. And from there, for those low angle shots, this remote control car with four cameras might come in handy in the super stock truck. Escanaba's Danny Boshaw had a narrow two lead in the season standings. He drives number 826 with white and orange letters. He came in second Saturday, was hoping for another podium finish. Boshaw was chasing Don Demony all afternoon, but he wasn't able to overtake him, settling for a runner-up result for the second day in a row. Another bright spot in the class was Red 834 of Escanaba's Rod Wilson. Wilson Wells was not driven much lately, but he raced quite well this weekend, finishing seventh Saturday and fourth on Sunday. And another great crowd turned out to watch the off-road 100 in the 1600 buggy class. Park Rivers, Fred Erickson in the blue, number 308, had troubles in the first turn for the second straight day. 
This time he does a 360 in traffic, putting him several spots behind. And a couple laps later, Erickson was going into the same turn. He's battling 383 Don Whittier for position. And Whittier decides Erickson will not be passing on the right end into the white tire he goes. Several laps later, Erickson ran into more trouble and is done for the day in eighth place after finishing 12th on Saturday. Here's some more results. Matt Ives would, from Stevenson won the stock truck race for the second straight day. Wilson's Jamie Clyclamp was fourth and Houghton's Matt Solka eight in the 600 buggy class. And Marquette's Charlie Bell was sixth, the Formula 4 by 4 division. And the middle count, USA had the most and they were leading everything. So that's all you need to know about the medal count. And go to our website, OverMichiganSource.com, for more on the races and everything. Olympics finally over. It's over. It's done. <laughs> Thanks, Donnie. Yeah. Up next, different cultures come together to sail away.